Hey everyone, it's Josh. First of all, I just want to thank all of you that have been leaving comments and feedback for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. I hope these videos are helping you out with your uh, car adventures. So for today, let's get started on this uh, 2004 Toyota Highlander. The owner's been complaining about hard shifting and the shifting sticking sometimes. Um, it's quite common in, in old, older vehicles as they build up the miles, the fluid gets dirty, the filter gets clogged in the transmission, and uh, it starts to not shift properly. Now you always have the option of a flush, and many mechanics will recommend that you do that when you're starting to have transmission problems. But um, sometimes that will actually make it worse, especially if a mechanic is not doing it properly, doesn't have the right equipment. Um, it's very expensive stuff that actually warms up the fresh fluid, runs it through the transmission, and a lot of times only dealers um, have the right equipment. And you can actually break loose old junk inside the transmission if it's an older one, and you can actually make the problem worse by doing a flush sometimes. What I'm going to do today is your option for uh, budget mechanicking, which is going to be just changing the fluid in the pan and putting in a new transmission filter. And nine times out of ten I found that this cleans up a lot of hard shifting problems and, uh, and really takes care of it without having to do an expensive flush. So let's go! Toyota 4Runner is not actually that low and bad but I'm going to jack it up a little bit just to give myself a little more uh, wiggle room underneath. So doing this job on this vehicle is actually pretty easy compared to some. As you can see the transmission uh, pan is, there's nothing blocking it. On some vehicles you'll have a cross member or an exhaust pipe running underneath and it's a big hassle to actually get to it. So first we're just going to drain the fluid using the drain and then we're going to deal with this dipstick which comes down from the top and comes in the side. We've got to make sure that doesn't snap off and then we just got to remove these 10,000 bolts around the circumference and this thing will come down. 14 millimeter. We got to loosen the top half of the dipstick. It's, it comes in two pieces. We're going to break it loose at the top and then be able to separate the two pieces so that when I pull the pan, it's not going to bend the pipe. 12 millimeter bolt. We're just going to break that loose. Okay, here we go. So we're going to take that loose and drop that bolt, that's important. Here's your dipstick, super easy to take out. One of the other reasons I do this, uh, besides wanting to avoid bending this when I rip the pan off, is uh, when I do put the pan back up, I'm going to be lining up all these holes, the gasket's going to be there. I don't want to have to worry about also having to line up the dipstick hole. So I'm just going to take the top half off so I don't have to worry about it when the new pan gasket is in. I'll drop this on top of the old hole and it'll be good to go. I'm going to throw the plug just finger tight back in so that when I loosen the pan I'm not sloshing any remaining stuff out on my face. So as I said, thousand little 10 millimeter bolts all around this outside. Just to speed things up, use a gun which is way overkill. This one I can't reach with my gun because of this cross member. get my bigger drain pan and break this loose and then dump anything that's left uh, into this. I'm going to take a little hammer. Don't use a metal one. When I use the hammer I'm hitting like on the ridges and stuff that are stronger. I'm going to try to avoid these spot, flat spots in the middle or the middle of the pan because you you'll bend it even with a, a softer hammer. Well, okay. Got ourselves a sticker. Triple check. I got all my bolt. Oh. Oh. See? Before we get too wild with a hammer or pry bars, just double check that you got all your bolts out. Uh, traditionally, they use a cork or a felt gasket on this training pan, but whoever did this last looks like they might have used like a red RTV, so it's essentially glued to the bottom of the transmission. So, we're probably going to have to pry this a little bit and or cut it. We just want to be really careful of this, of the edge of the pan. We don't ever want to put dents or pockets in it that are then going to leak forever. So you're just going to go around and lift as, as close to the outer edge 
of the pan as you can. Do a little bit here and there. Don't try to break the whole thing loose at once. I can hear it coming. So I'll take a uh, X-Acto knife blade like this. So I'm just running the blade down the pan. All right, so I've got this cut like down to here and I can tell it's giving me some wiggle room. As soon as you got a wiggle, you got it made. You just keep bouncing it, working it. Get this far side. Whoa, it's exciting. Push that under here. So I'm still catching drips. So here's the pan. This is a good time to like play around with this fluid a little bit. See if you can see any shiny slick on top. It would tell you some bearings are going. I don't see any, it looks good. So the bottom of the inside of the pan, there's these three magnets and they trap any loose particles of metal that are traveling through the system so that they don't get circulated through and mess up your transmission. These guys are looking pretty fuzzy. They've got a lot of crud on them. It's got over 200,000 miles on it, so it's not uncommon that you'd get a lot of particles, but all that is, there, it's basically metal filings from your transmission. I'm gonna clean it off, get all the shavings out of there. So now, we're just gonna clean up this, this gasket surface as well as the mating surface on the transmission and uh, put the new gasket on um, and then we'll get to the filter. So if this were just the normal cork or felt gasket, it'd probably come up a lot easier. But since it's RTV, I've got to do the hard, do the hard way and I'll scrape it all off. So I'll see you in a couple hours. Okay, now that we have the pan off, we're gonna pull this filter. This is the filter right here. Four bolts, one here, two there, and uh, fairly straightforward. Just gonna break them all loose. Pop it off. Get all the fluid out that we can. Let's let it sit there for a bit. Okay, so we have the filter out. And if you look at uh, the fluid that just came out of the filter, you see all these shiny specks, There's little particles of transmission. Inside the ports of the filter, you can see shiny flakes of metal as well. So the filter's catching all of it, but you know that the transmission's breaking down essentially into little pieces. We're just kind of uh, putting off the inevitable, as it were. So I'm just gonna double check again my new part versus my old part, make sure everything matches, looks the same. Um, one thing to note, on the back of this filter, there's these cork gaskets. So make sure that your new one has them, because that's gonna um, keep your, your sump from sucking up fluid you know, outside of the filter if, if this leaks. Now I'm just gonna scrape the bottom surface of the transmission where the pan meets up with it. Get all the remaining RTV chunks out of the way. So uh, you can kind of see on this filter, these two holes have this flange that spaces it out. So those are where your longer bolts are gonna go is in these, and then these two will be the short ones. Those right here. I'm just gonna wipe down the surface where those little cork gaskets touch. So I don't have any unnecessary fluid in between the gasket and the metal. Yeah. And the short one's on the opposite corner. And just keep in mind that these are screwing into aluminum. So as with most of these parts on these newer cars, no need to crank them real hard. There's a chance you can strip them out. Put some brake cleaner on this rag. And I'm just gonna wipe down this surface. 
get all the oil off. Good time to check if any of that gasket material got there like that. Little flakes of stuff. You want to remove all the particles you can. You do the same thing for the pan. Run around the end of this. Kill any oil and stuff. I put my little magnets back in. Let's see if my new gasket fits. There we go. And what I like to do, sometimes gaskets will let me do this. This one looks like it'll work. They have small enough holes. I actually install a couple bolts and the gasket will hold them in place. Um, another thing you want to make sure is clean is this dipstick fitting because you don't want junk being knocked down inside this tube when you fit the top end. So as with any gasket, you want to make sure that your mating surfaces on either side of the gasket are, are really clean. The gasket itself is clean, doesn't have a ton of oil or chunks that are going to make a bad seal. Here we go. <sighs> I'm gonna work that dipstick hose up in there. So now I can just sort of finger tighten a couple of these bolts that I already put in. Now I've got it finger tight. I'm gonna take a light. And I'm just gonna look around the edge and make sure that I see gasket nicely sandwiched in between. I'm looking for where it's it's folded inside or something odd. So now, I'm just gonna hand start all these. Okay, so I've got all the bolts in there, just finger tight started. And now I'm going to go around and tighten them up. And there's supposedly gonna be a, a bolt tightening pattern that you're supposed to follow as well as torque specific settings that you should tighten these to. Um, what I'm going to do is a little bit uh, less official, a little trick I learned from uh, Eric Car Guy back in the day. Uh, you set uh, your your uh, cordless drill to like the clutch settings for driving in screws. So that way you set it to a number and it's going to make them all the same. And that's really the most important thing when you're torquing down a pan like this is that they're all the same, one or two are not you know, super tight, um, etc. And then I'm going to do a crisscross pattern back and forth so that it that it settles in evenly. On my DeWalt, I'm on an 11. So it should be uh, somewhat similar for your gun as well. So these ones at the ends are up hard to get to without an extension, so I threw one on. I'm going to put the upper half of my dipstick tube in. So my first quart is going to be this uh, Lucas Oil transmission fix. I'll substitute that for one of my quarts of transmission fluid. If you're in a cold climate, you might want to stick this thing out in the sun somewhere or put it in a pot of boiling water for a little while to like... Um, warm it up because it's really thick and it won't want to go down that dipstick very fast. Now that I have the Lucas oil in, I'm just going to finish off with uh, normal transmission fluid and then start the engine up and check it as I would normally if I'm checking my level and make sure that it's up to the right line for warm or cold. So the dipstick on this 4Runner is pretty standard. It's got the cool, the, the low and the high mark for cool, and the low and the high mark for hot. So obviously as we're filling up, we're checking the cool mark, and we want to make sure it lands in there. And then after I'm done, I'm going to start up the car warmed up, make sure it's still good when it gets warm, and add if I need to. Okay, there we go. Transmission fluid and filter changed. Some differences here and there, but this is the basic idea for, for most vehicles doing transmission fluid. And uh, I hope this helps you guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe below, and we'll see you next time.